All right, Shay, what's up, YouTube? It's Prophet Doom back to you again for another video. And I figure, you know, spend a few minutes um, on camera because uh, I had some, well, a couple things I want to talk about. The first thing I want to talk about, if you haven't checked it out, I have a new video posted on FS Avenger. Uh, it's been about three, four days. You know, um, that I, I, I entitled it Real in words versus real men. And yes, I talk about the issue of the real. A lot of, some niggas like call themselves to I say that they're real in words. You know, I, I deal with that. And what I deal what I touch on briefly in that video is the fact that it seems that these real in words are becoming more and more active, more and more emboldened, and it's all around the amount of rights and civil liberties that are being extended to these real Negroes, that they can run around here now and do things, and like I said, and I mean that, hide behind their rights, because these real Negroes don't give a shit about anybody or anything except themselves and those who uh, they feel are part of their inner circle, so to speak. Just like I told you about the day we came when we as people are given our own homeland, it's going to be run by the nigger, or excuse me, the Negro, with the most guns and the most niggas, the biggest biggest uh, army or the biggest gang is going to run wherever wherever you we live at. And it's going to be a dictatorship. It's not going to be a democracy. I guarantee you that shit, right? And we can look at it very clearly. If something like Nish Islam, Elijah Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad didn't have a, he was, they wasn't running no democracy. He didn't, he didn't really have a successor necessarily. The one that uh, really came out and spoke, it was a real like a shock. At the end, when they found out that they, he had, um, some say he did, some say he didn't uh, appoint or anoint uh, Wafdin Muhammad to be his successor. It wasn't something that was clear. He was in power and he kept power to the day he dropped dead. And it looks like that's going to be the case with, with uh, Mr. Farrakhan. As it has been with Mobutu, Sesu Seko, Papa Doc Duvayet, and uh, many, many other uh, dictators, black dictators, black dictators throughout this planet. And we see uh, a, a similar appetite and we see a similar disposition in these so-called real niggas who don't really give a shit about, although if you ask them, they would probably say they do, but they really don't. And, uh, no, it's not, I was going to say it's cool, but no, it's not cool, especially when people are fighting for you not to be shot not to be illegally uh, or someone to arrest you without you know real cause, whatever the case may be. And uh, we have a situation where the police are now in a, in a place where they don't want to stop you. They don't want to, you know, uh, do anything that may uh, cause you to, you know, uh, there may be a situation where they may get some backlash, you know. And so uh, I think that's what's leading to this, this, this uh, rise and killings and shootings and a lot of other shit that goes on in the black community. Um, this is this is part of it. Along with the fact that part of this pandemic also, uh, I mean, the pandemic is a perfect, perfect backdrop. It's just a perfect uh, situation, you know, uh, for the crime rate to skyrocket in uh, the black community. I mean, how, 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 I mean, how incredibly, uh, how, how can you say this? Um, coincidental it is that one of the um, one of the uh, uh, responses to this pandemic is the wearing of the mask the wearing of the mask right I mean it could because you really think of if I want and you can wear it anytime any place you could be riding your car and the police they wouldn't feel anything see you wear for and wear any kind of mask you want now I have my, let me see if I can, I probably can't find it right now. Let me look and see if I can find my mask, one of my masks that I, that I bought recently. And I have bought this one early on in the pandemic. And I had to buy it again because uh, of the new mask mandates. I'll put it on now so you can see it. And uh, you can actually wear this out in the fucking street. And the police... You know, not only can they, can't they say anything to you, they're not supposed to say anything. You, you're encouraged to do this. Let me see if I can put this thing on the right way. I don't know if I can do it. Let me try. Hold on a second. Give me one second here. Give me 
one second. I can actually walk around like this, looking just like this, and nobody, police, anybody else, really, they can't say anything to me. I mean, how convenient this this uh, mass wearing is to those who have nefarious thoughts, ideas, and purposes. If you are a stick-up kid, or if you want to kill somebody, I mean, is anything... Can anything be more perfect than that you now have? It's mandated. <laughs> it's the law. In my city, you have to wear a mask inside. But well, they, they just, they're going to, they, they just uh, reinstituted that. Well, you have to wear a mask when you're on public transportation. You have to wear a mask indoors, certain places. So, I mean, if you're a person that is involved in some kind of criminal activities, I mean, this is the perfect, perfect storm. You could just, and then the camera, you have no fear of the camera. They have a thousand cameras around. Doesn't make a difference. I got this on. You can't tell who the fuck I put a hat on and a hoodie over this. You don't need a hoodie to put a hat on. Like I told you, I went to, to a store one time uh, recently, and the broad in behind. I couldn't hear because I have a headphone. I told you, I have a headphone. I couldn't hear her. She's banging on the glass, telling me what to take my fucking hoodie off. And I wasn't wearing. And I was. I wasn't wearing a mask at the time. Right? She told me to take my. But now. If I had a, if I had a mask on, she couldn't tell me that. She wouldn't be able to tell me to take my fucking mask off. So they tripping about a hoodie. And in some stores that that had a, had a, a, a rule where they wouldn't allow you to wear a hoodie inside the store because you could you could conceal your identity. Well, huh, da da. And so I think again, this is something that is not you know uh, accidental. This is something that's by design. Because as you can see, the murder rate in a lot of communities, especially where I live, it has doubled or tripled um, since last year. And it's getting worse every day. But the crazy part about it, the most, the most amazing thing about it, and most of the shootings that I've seen on YouTube, as, as crazy as it seems, none of these motherfuckers were wearing fucking masks. Nobody was wearing a fucking mask. How? But that's a good thing. That's a good thing. That... You know, you have an illegal gun and you're shooting somebody without a fucking mask on. That just shows that, yeah, you're, you're how stupid you are and you definitely need to be locked up under the fucking jail for the rest of us ever left your fucking stinking life if you're really that dumb. You know, but then a lot of motherfuckers are wearing the mask and they are using it to cover their identity when they're going out shooting motherfuckers. It's just a perfect storm. And the pandemic, again, it facilitates that, you know, uh, in a lot of places. So... These uh, real niggers, so to speak, who make, make, make a living, you know, uh, doing illegal shit, whatever the case is, which I don't knock them for that, per se. But then at the same time, you know, it's, it's problemat problematic when, you know, the, the, the side effects of their activity is something that you can't deny. I mean, uh, especially talking about drugs. We talk about the crack epidemic. Well, people had to get money to buy crack. They had to get money to buy crack. They stole shit, you know. They broke into your car. They tried to rob you. They tried to steal whatever you had to go sell it so they could buy crack. Same thing was when heroin was out. You know, one of the famous stories, well, a, a, a personal story of mine is one of my cousins was a junkie back in the 60s. And um, he uh, actually um, climbed a fire escape into my aunt's apartment and stole a TV. And people saw the nigga coming down the fire escape with the TV, but he was so strung out on that on dope that, you know, he had, he had to get that money so he can get his TV. So that's one of the side effects of, you know, um, when you're dealing drugs. So even though I say, man, nigga got to do what nigga got to do, and I still say that, you know, um, this is part of what has to be dealt with. It has to be, uh, has to be talked about. Now, and one thing that, I, that I, I, I've noticed, because I was watching something on TV, you know, as, as regards to, to criminal activity, especially when you get money and it seems like you're in something that, you can't be busted, or it would be very difficult for you to bust it, be busted. And I noticed this even when I was in, when I was on my little criminal uh, tip back in the early '90s. You know, uh, the only thing that's going to stop a motherfucker that's that's getting money, and he's involved in a, some kind of criminal activity where the money's good, is either death or jail. There's nothing going to stop a motherfucker from doing that. And I was watching that 
these uh these dudes black dudes had an insurance uh scam going in Philly, and it had involved uh car car accidents, and uh they had it was it was a really a, a good fucking plan. But what happened? They kept they just they got greedy and they want they wanted more and they was making money. They was making millions of dollars a year off this fucking insurance scam. But they were incorporating hundreds of people, like in, like like regular people. And paying people, you know, to crash their cars and, and have, they had a shot where the guy would come and he would do more damage to increase the, you know, the amount of the insurance payout. And then he had a doctor that the people went to. And I was involved, I was involved that one time. I mean, you know, I should tell Ben the fucking lawyer's name and send me to the, the, the bogus doctor for the back shit, you know, for the, for the, uh, there's, there's, there's a condition in your back, you know, soft tissue damage where they got, we have this heat, heat therapy. We go heat therapy twice or three times a week. There was, he, they had that going and they was making money. But they it ultimately, the whole thing came crashing down. And um, one dude, the mechanic, he um, he uh, uh, turned state evidence, and he didn't get any time. But the ringleader, big black, that's because they big black or some shit. He got like 18 years in federal penitentiary. Another one got eight years. And they it was it was uh, you know so um, if you're going to be involved in criminal activity, I'll tell any motherfucker that's involved in crime and you getting money like that, that man put some of that money away. Save some of that money for a rainy day because a rainy day is going to come. You're going to get locked up. You're going to jail. You're going to face some time, especially if it's, you know, um, some serious shit. And so um, this is just kind of a little commercial for that. But uh, so I made that video, you know, uh, real, real, uh, uh, real, and real N word versus real men. That's on FS Avenger. And um, uh, another thing I want to talk about is, is, a, is a documentary that, that I watched. I watched it over and over again because, like I told you, I was really into watching you know videos related to 9-11 right well this video is not necessarily about 9-11 even though 9-11 is mentioned it's really about the whole society and what the society is really all about for real for real and again who really runs the society how it was set up why it's set up how we are basically just uh like i said we're like farm animals they they have found they have harnessed our wants and desires they have given us the appetite for material shit that if left to our own devices we wouldn't even think about producing but they produce this shit we consume it and we're like hamsters on a fucking treadmill going around and around and around until we drop dead and then uh somebody else takes our place whatever the case may be but it's a very very deep video and one of one of the areas they talk about I, I mentioned to you and i mean it's amazing because this is the first time i saw this video a couple days ago and i really didn't know anybody else uh shared this concept or this idea and then they broke it down so thoroughly, and they, they broke it down so, um, you know, perfectly, and, and, and it's, it's, it's a reality. It's a reality that you have groups of people, and they talk about this from Roman times. They talk about the Bible, and how the Bible is a tool to enslave you. It's, it's about enslaving you spiritually. He talk, they talk about Constantine, the Roman, some, you know, over in, in, in the Vatican, and how they sat down and wrote this book up to do just that. And if you, if you read the Bible, when the Bible say you are a prisoner, if you become a Christian, you are a prisoner or a slave uh, to Jesus Christ. That's what it says. You are a prisoner of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you look, if you look at uh, Jesus Christ, where is he? He's, he's on the cross. He's suffering on the cross. He's being sacrificed. He's sacrificing himself for the betterment of all mankind. And you're supposed to be in a similar situation. You're supposed to follow that example to be, you know, like Jesus and long suffering and all the rest of that crap. And I don't want to knock anybody with this because I know there's nothing I can say or anybody else can say that's gonna that's gonna uh, take anybody out of their faith. That's not what I'm trying to do, attempting to do. But I'm just saying you can have faith in a lot of things. People have faith in all kinds of shit, and it's just no different than being than this so-called living God. People who believe in voodoo. Believe just as strongly as you believe in that if, if, if they go to their witch doctor, whoever it is, he's going to give them some potion and they're going to feel better. Or that if somebody gets a doll and sticks pins in it, they're going to feel the pain of being stuck by the pins, whatever the case would be, because they believe that strongly in, in it. You know, the witch doctor of, of any indigenous tribes, the same thing. He, he puts together potions and he puts together spells to, to, for people and they feel better or they feel worse because they believe in that shit. They believe that this actually will, does something for them. It's all about the mind. It's all about the power of the mind. You know, to control uh, our feelings and to and to give us a sense of of, of uh, wellness or a sense of feeling bad, whatever the case may be. But um, the main thing that they that they said in regards to that is how that by giving us religion, religion 
has separated us from nature, which we, spoke, which we are attached to whether we want to be or not. And now we're no longer a part of nature. We, we, we have accepted this book and what's in the book and then however it's been manipulated because it has been manipulated over hundreds of years. It's been twisted and turned in every kind of way. But they gave us that and instead of, you know, uh, how we're supposed to live. A lot of us don't believe that, but this is, and I call it normally and naturally. And we don't want anything to do with normal, living normally and naturally. As men and women are supposed to live. You know, which where you, have, you, where you have a relationship with a piece of geography, wherever that may be. Where there's, you have the resource you need, water, land to grow food, and you interact with other living things who have a right to live um, around you. And they flow around you, live their life, and you live yours. And your spiritual beliefs your belief in what God is, a high power is, all emanates from your immediate environment. The trees, the, the water, the animals, you know, uh, the crops that you grow, all help to um, make up whatever is a part of what you believe this uh, thing called God, God is, or the higher power, or your spiritual belief system. You know, things are, are taboo. There's things that you don't do. There are things that you do that you do that will bless you and that will make you make your crops grow better whatever the case may be if you perform certain rituals all people have this throughout the world wherever they may be people who have never came in contact with each other have some 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 uh spiritual belief system that consists of these things and i thought that was something very interesting that was mentioned in, in this uh documentary this, the documentary by the way if i if i don't forget i'm going to try to post remember to post the uh a link to this documentary it's, it's about an hour and a half long it's going, you know, so, but I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend that you watch this documentary. It's called Zeitgeist, the movie. You know, there's a series of, of, of documentaries with that title, Zeitgeist. But this one really goes, like, into, in, into some things that, uh, man, and, and, they, and, they, and they talk about 9-11. They talk about 9-11 in its, in, its, in its true context, that it was a false flag operation. Like there have been many, many other false flag operations. And not only they, and, and, and they give the background information. And they give you the facts behind it. And you hear people speaking from that time telling you that, hey, this shit is some fake shit. This is some made up bullshit. This is to get us in. It happened in World War One, World War Two, Vietnam, and 9-11. It's all by the same people. The same group. And they go, they go, they break it down for you. So we're involved in something. Again, we're, we're basically just, you know, uh, they have turned us in into some form of a farm animal. You know, uh, human beings, we're no longer men and women anymore. We're, 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 we're really are sheep and, and cattle. Sitting in the past and chewing, chewing our cud, waiting to be taken to the slaughter. Well, they don't want to slaughter us, they make money off our activity. You know, as long as you're out here and you're spending money and you're buying this and you're buying that, you know, they, they get paid. And of course, this, this money system that we own is going to collapse. It has to collapse. The whole thing has to be collapsed. And it will be because it has to, it, the game has to be has to be uh, reconfigured now. Just like with the World Trade Center is being destroyed. They had to be destroyed. Why? Now they, so they can be re, so they be rebuilt to be more efficient, more effective, more economical, and all the rest of that, which is more modern, which is which it is. Which could not have been done uh, through any other mechanism besides the way that they, that they did it. And there is no easy way to really break this, this whole system down. It has to be done deliberately. It's going to be violent. And it's going to take a long time. It's going to involve the death of many, many millions upon millions of people. There's no way around that. And 9-11 lets you know very clearly and without no doubt that there are motherfuckers that have power here who will kill you and everything you know and love and not fucking blink. And they don't give a fuck about who you are. How big and bad you are, how big your balls are, how honest you are, how fucking caring and loving you are, how much you love this country or any fucking thing else. All they care is about their power because they're sick. They're sociopaths. They had one in the, in one scene. They had one of the Rockefellers, one of the one of the, like the grandchildren of Rockefeller. He was speaking, and, and the guy that he was speaking to, he was actually telling this guy a year before 9/11 happened that 9/11 was going to happen, and why, and exactly what was going to happen after that event. And the guy said he stopped being his friend. He even, you know he played the tape and all of that shit of, of this guy, this Rockefeller, one of the grandchildren of of, of, of one of the the uh, in Rock, Rockefeller family. He said, yeah, this, this is what's going to happen. They did, and so we're being played in so many ways. But again, like dumb farm animals, we focusing on each other, as we should do, as farm animals we should, and we bite each other on the back and we attack each other, as 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 a farm animal should, and as a slave should. Our focus and our hate should be for each other and not for our master. 
That's the only. That's only right, and that's exactly what's happening here. So I want to recommend that. Recommend that I want to talk about that um, real quick to uh, uh, to um, encourage you to watch. Uh, it's another documentary. I definitely want to encourage you to watch, and you will find very informative. And you again, it will it will direct you to understand who really rules and reigns in this country. Not only that, but runs and, and decides whether your children have a fucking future or not. It's not you. It's not your wife. It's not nobody in your family. It's, it's them. Because they have separated you from nature. See, in the past, it was, it was a situation where the relationship was between you and nature. Nature decided whether you, uh, you know, if there was a flood or if a drought happened, then you would be affected by it. That's something between you and nature. Now, they have interjected themselves between you and nature. Now, they decide what the quality or quantity of your life is going to be on this fucking planet. And we have no problem with that at all. None at all. And again, because we're, you know, well, again, because farm animals, as we, that they turned us into, you know, of course we're not supposed to think about these things. We're not supposed to care about these things. That would be ridiculous. Well, why would a cow, uh, what would make a cow think about being taken to the slaughter? What would make a pig think about being killed? They, that, that's not something that pigs do. You know, pigs wallow in mud. Pigs eat slop. You know, that's what a pig and cows moo and they, they chew their cud. They don't think about things <laughs> past that. That would be ridiculous. And it's the same thing. This is this is how we have, how thoroughly we have been dumbed the fuck down and blinded. We've blinded ourselves to believe something that's not true. We live inside the fucking matrix that we believe we actually control our destiny and lives, and we don't. That's just how the fuck, how the fuck it is. I don't know. Um, um, there's more that I can say, but I've said everything that I want to say at this time. So I'm going to do it this time. Let me cut this video short. Thank you for your time, and you take it. Easy, everybody. Take it easy. I'll be back with you later. Be good.